So today we're going to talk about trade agreements. In particular, what we're going to do here in this segment is we're going to show how trade agreements can be welfare improving. So what we're going to take as, as a starting point for our analysis, we're going to go back to the analysis of tariffs that we did back in chapter 8. And so we're starting off here. What we have is a large country analysis. So you've already seen all this before. And so we have our starting point is the world price, which is given by the intersection of the export supply and import demand curves, and a price of PW, which in, under these scenario conditions with these domestic supply and demand curves, would give us imports of M0 at that world price of PW. Now remember, what we have here is this is the large country scenario. So when we're looking at this, what you have to remember uh, are the, the predictions from last time where we said that the net welfare effect for the home country that is that they gain E, right, that's that terms of trade gain, but lose B and D, right? Our consumption, right, D is that consumption loss or distortion, and B was our production distortion or loss, both terms used fairly commonly there. So again, B is the production loss or distortion. And E, that's our terms of trade gain. Right? That's the part of the tariff revenue that the home country collects that instead of coming at the expense of domestic consumers, as Part C does, comes at the expense of the foreign producers. Right? And so if you're a large country and you have a tariff that's not too large, you can actually have a net welfare gain if E is larger than B and D. But remember that that also comes at, right, that E comes at the expense of the foreign country. And don't forget that in addition to, to E, the foreign country also loses F. Right? F is the part of the global deadweight loss that comes at the expense of the foreign producers. So our total global deadweight loss is B plus D and then F. Okay. So now what we want to think about is a scenario where you have two large countries and they're trying to figure out whether they want to impose a tariff or stay in a free trade regime. So here we're going to go back to using our, our game theory analysis. Okay? So we're going to set up our two by two matrix. So we'll put the foreign country as being the, the columns. And the home country's choices are going to determine, and the choice is going to determine the, the row. And so the two, the, the two choices that we have is to stay with free trade, so don't impose a tariff. Or impose a tariff. Okay. <clears throat> and again, we're going to put no tariff right, for, the, for home. No tariff will be the upper row or the upper half here. And then the imposition where they choose to impose the tariff will be the bottom row. And as before, so we'll put since home is up top, we'll put their payoffs on the upper part of our cell here. And home will go in the bottom half. So what we're going to do is we're going <clears> to, <throat> starting from the default of free trade, okay, so starting from the default of free trade, just like as we did with our analysis here, we'll say when what happens if you know, we start having each side impose a tariff. So the gains or, or losses from compared to free trade of no tariff by both countries is just zero because we're actually not, right, we're not moving away from free trade. We're staying in a, both countries engaging in free trade. Now what happens if foreign doesn't impose a tariff, so we're working on our first column here, but home does, okay? So then we just go back and, and look at this here. So if home imposes a tariff, and foreign does not, we know that home is going to gain E minus B and D. Okay. 
and that's going to be, or so we're assuming that'll be greater than zero. In other words, we're assuming that they're setting the tariff small enough that E outweighs B and D. But again, you have to, to go back to chapter eight and remember that at some point, as you make the tariff larger and larger, B and D, because those distortions, right, get bigger and bigger, they get larger and larger, and as the amount of, of imports gets smaller and smaller, E gets, gets smaller, right? So as the tariff gets larger, at some point E gets smaller, B and D get bigger, and this will turn negative. What about the foreign country? Well, for the foreign country, they're going to incur these losses of E and F. And let's just assume that we have a, the two countries are identical, so we can just have symmetry here. So if we go to the, just kind of flip the scenario around and say, home does not impose a tariff, but foreign does. Well, now foreign, by imposing the tariff, gets those gains of E minus B plus D. And home is going to experience the losses. Now what happens if both countries impose a tariff on the other side's goods? So now we've got to combine the two effects. So looking at the home country, when they impose the tariff, they gain E and lose B and D. But foreign's tariff imposes losses of E and F on the home country. So home by imposing a tariff, gets this terms of trade gain E, but that's being wiped out when foreign imposes a tariff on home's goods, right? So that creates for home a terms of trade loss, right? So you're actually taking the, you know, the payoffs on, from here and combining it with these payoffs here. So now what you have is minus B, D, and F, right? And what's, what's important to, to note here is that these losses here, right? You've got this B, D, and F. That's a, you gotta compare that to, to this loss here, right? Compare it to E and F. And so when we're gonna, once we fill in, obviously this side's gonna be the same as well, B, D, and F. So now the question of course becomes which, which loss is, is larger? So let, Get to that in a second. Let's go ahead and, and work through how we solve our, our game here. So from foreign's perspective, if home imp does not impose a tariff, then what does foreign want to do? Well, foreign would rather take E minus B plus D, which is positive, instead of zero. So foreign wants to impose a tariff. Now the question is, well, what if home does impose a tariff? Are they better off taking losses of E plus F or B, D, and F? Well, remember, E is larger than B plus D. Right? Well, that's what we've been saying, that they're setting the tariff in such a way that E minus B plus D is greater than zero. In other words, E is larger than B plus D. So if you're looking at this, E is a larger loss here than B plus D, and then they share F in common. So E and F is a larger loss than B, D, and F. So foreign would choose this payoff over this one. Okay. So now what do we have here? Here we have a dominant strategy for foreign. Foreign always wants to impose a tariff. Right? It doesn't matter what home does, whether home imposes a tariff or does not. In both cases, foreign's best response is to impose a tariff. By symmetry, we should get the same result for the home country. So if foreign does not impose a tariff, the home country would rather take this gain of E minus B plus D rather than zero. So their best response is to impose a tariff. If foreign imposes a tariff, again, they would rather take a loss of B, D, and F than a loss of E and F. So again, their best response is to impose a tariff. Just as with foreign, 
Ohm has a dominant strategy. They want to impose a tariff, which means that this outcome, where both countries impose tariffs, this is our Nash equilibrium. In other words, this is where we're going to end up. We end up in our trade war here. Okay? Both countries anticipate that the other side has the incentive to impose a tariff. And honestly, they're in their, their best, it's in their best interest to impose a tariff anyway. But of course, if you look at this, both countries would be better off if we could be up here. Right? We don't want to be incurring all of these losses. And so that's the, the logic behind a trade agreement, is that it locks us in to the outcome where neither country imposes tariffs, instead of the outcome we're likely to get without the free trade agreement. So the gains from a free trade agreement are seen in keeping us away from this bad equilibrium outcome. Okay. Now, another analysis we can do when looking at trade agreements and is to say, think about, well, what if it's not so clear that what we're doing is buying our goods from the lowest cost producer. Now here, everything we've assumed is we're just going out there and we're, you know, there's, there's a world price. You know, here we've got a two country analysis. But what happens if we throw a third country into the mix and we form a trade agreement with one country but not the other? We're going to take a look at no, concepts of trade creation and trade diversion in the second part of this video.